Welcome back, Double Egg Premium members. It is time for the Double Egg Premium exclusive show. We go over our picks and bets for UFC 293. This is the uh, edition headlined by Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland. Uh, we'll get into it and uh, so we can give you the best breakdown for these bets. Main event, Israel Adesanya, Sean Strickland, what you got? Yeah, man, for this one, it, it's so hard to to not take Izzy by finish here just because he's going to be levels above Strickland. So I took the under four and a half rounds. I do think Izzy's probably going to be more aggressive because he's not going to be worried about a bunch of danger on the feet like he would from a guy like Alex or, you know, even Apollo Costa or somebody super explosive. So I think on the feet, he's going to be pretty aggressive and kind of do what he wants. I think he finds a finish. So yeah, under four and a half rounds, uh, minus 125 for 1 1.25 units. Yeah, I, I like that too. I got the under four and a half rounds as well, minus one twenty for uh, one point two units. That's really the only straight bet I got on that one because it's pretty tough unless you're going to go with the dog. I got Adesanya in a parlay with uh, Charles Ratke and Carlos Olberg plus one seventeen for a unit there. Just threw him in the parlay, um, and then I got two underdog plays on this one. Lower than 112 and a half significant strikes for Adesanya because I took the under. I should probably take the lower than strikes as well. And uh, I like the plus 26 and a half significant strikes for Sean Strickland. Fight could end early. 26 and a half is a lot. Sean Strickland has pretty good volume. Whenever you get a big line like that on a guy that has like a regularly good significant strike ratio, I think it's definitely worth a shot. So got those. Um, I think Izzy probably finds a finish too. Uh, but if you look at those underdog plays, if Strickland does elect to wrestle and grapple, um, he could burn some clock. So they're not going to be racking up the strike. So I like that too. Uh, Co-main event, Tai Tuivasa. Alexander Volkov, what you got on that one? I think you have to take the dangerous dog. I mean, it's plus 200, I had to take him. I'm not necessarily like super confident that he goes out there and beats Volkov because Volkov's a good fighter. He's six foot seven. I mean, that's hard to deal with for anybody. So it's going to be tough. But I mean, you look at the guys like Derek Lewis with power who was able to touch Volkov. Tuivas is kind of that same style, but I think he's a little faster than Lewis. Um, he'll throw more shots at once than Lewis. And, you know, he's just got to catch him one time. And I think at plus 200, there's some value on that. Yeah, I like Tuivasa too. I think he's got a he's, there's a path to victory for him. It's not like he's completely outgunned. So I took him by KO or decision at plus two forty for a unit. I like him uh, mostly by KO, but the KO line that I was able to get was like plus two sixty. So I just took it down to plus two forty in case he does make it to a decision. Um, he could throw him up against the cage. He can land some big bombs. There's a path to victory for him. I like him there. I think it's a little just disrespectful taking it uh considering his last two opponents are like two of the best in the heavyweight division Volkov has been middling uh most of his career so i'll take that uh, i believe that's all i got on that one uh manel cop felipe dos santos what you got on that one yeah i got a couple things here um i've got a parlay that is manel cop money line paired with radke and diamond under 2.5 rounds for minus 113, 1.13 units. I, I think, you know, this Dos Santos kid's probably going to be good and he's probably going to be tough. But we're talking about fighting a top 10 stud on your first fight in the UFC. I think that's tough. Uh, I think Cop is super skilled on the feet. I think he's he's good on the ground. I just think there's going to be a, a skill gap here. And I think Cop should either get the decision or find a, a KO even in the middle to late. Uh, half of the fight so i had to sprinkle uh, round two finish plus 375 and round three finish at plus 700 each for a quarter of the unit as well yeah, i didn't get too invested in this one uh, i just got cop in a parlay with olberg and hack plus 107 for a unit and then uh for a little prop on cop i went with the the bigger money on him by decision at plus 280 for 0.2 units so just a little sprinkle there but considering he's a big favorite going up against a guy making his debut, we don't really know how good Dos Santos is. He could be pretty solid. He could be really tough. He's young. I'm sure he could probably take a punch. So uh, maybe Manal Cop gets it done by decision. At plus 280, I thought it was good enough to sprinkle on there. Justin Taffa, Austin Lane. What you got on this one? Yeah, I laid off, ultimately. I, I was on Austin Lane most of the week, but 
it's just not enough value, I guess, at that number for me. Um, if you're on a side, I think that has to be the side on the money line. If you're going to play a, a tough a KO, I wouldn't mind that at all. But uh, nothing for me on this one. Uh, I got lane by KO or decision at plus 260 for 0.5 units. Um, that's just like really bumping up the money line price there. Plus 260 is really solid for that. Yeah, I don't think he probably submits Justin Taffa. Justin Taffa doesn't really have a, <laughs> a neck to submit him for. So uh, I like that there. And then the sneaky prop to me this week is lane by decision at plus 1,100 for 0.1 units. I get these are, are heavyweights. This is a plus 1,100 play, so don't go crazy on it. But Justin Taffa, two of his three losses come by decision. And Austin Lane, if he fights smart, he should probably stay to the outside and just chip away at him, maybe even mix in some clinch and uh, some wrestling if he can. If he just goes in there hucking bombs, he's going to get knocked out, and that just wipes away. But plus 1,100, there's a path to victory for him there, I think, uh, by decision that is a little sneaky at plus 1,100. I think it's worth a, a, a point one units there. Um, and then in the underdog section, we got plus 6.5 significant strikes for Lane. He outlanded him in the first fight, three to nothing in 30 seconds. So uh, I'll take that. I mean, Justin Taffa, not like he's pretty easy to hit. He means he's shorter, uh, fatter dude at heavyweight going against a six foot six guy. He's going to be able to chip away with the kicks. I'm sure he could rack it up. And plus six and a half is just too much uh, for that one. And then higher than three and a half minutes of fight time on underdog as well for Justin Taffa because. I think these guys probably take it slow a little bit. I mean, the guy got his eye gouged his last time out, so I don't expect him to go in there just hucking bombs. And uh, like I said, Austin Lane, path to victory, is to just kind of stay to the outside. Uh, so I like that. At three and a half, most other apps had it like 4.75 or four and a half. So at three and a half, I, just, I had to put it in there. Uh, that's all I got on that one. We got Tyson Pedro and Tantra Cali. What you got on that one? Oh, yeah. I got Tyson Pedro money line plus 100, 1.5 units. And I think he's being like a little bit disrespected in like the lead up in the narrative in this fight. I think he's better than Turkali. I think Turkali, you know, has fought two good opponents. But at the same time, like he hasn't really looked impressive. Like he's going to spam takedowns on Pedro. Pedro's strong. He's a big dude. Like it's going to be harder to get him down and control him than you think. And uh, on the feet, I think he's got more pop. And he's at home. He's coming off of a bad performance, which he had an injury in. So if he's healthy, I think he's going to look really, really good on Saturday. And I think it's worth a shot on the money line when you're getting him at a coin flip for, you know, I took him for one and a half units. So uh, I know you like him too. It's free play of the week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, I think it's a great buy low spot on Tyson Pedro. Yeah. Everyone was so pissed about his last performance. And then you go back two more fights and it's like two really shitty opponents. So I think he's very talented, and the UFC has known that for a while. You look at Turkali, the two losses doesn't impress, even if you watch the film on it. Um, I think Pedro out, can outstrike him on the feet pretty easily. He's just got to stuff takedowns. He doesn't have the best takedown defense, so Turkali could rack him up. But he, he is dangerous on the ground, uh, Tyson Pedro is as well. So I got Pedro on the money line, plus 100 for one unit. And then I also sprinkled on the fight to go the distance at uh, plus 215 for 0.25 units considering Anton Turcali looked pretty durable against Vitor Petrino. Petrino didn't fight the smartest, but if Turcali does go to uh, the grappling-heavy game, it could go to a decision. Turcali's been to two decisions. Pedro's been to two decisions. Uh, for that price at plus 215, like I think it's worth a shot. Don't get too invested in it, though. Uh, I believe that's all I got on that one. We go to the prelims. Carlos Olberg, Dao Jung. Jung. What you got on that one? Yeah, so for this one, I've got Olberg and a parlay with Malarkey. Uh, minus 115 for 1 1.15 units. And that is all I've got on that fight. I think Olberg should get it done. Um, I was worried that it really get too invested, though, because I think there's a world where he doesn't get the first round finish and he slows down a little bit and Dong Jung's pretty damn experienced and he's fought a lot of good guys as well. And he's heavy in the clinch. Like if Dong Jung gets you in the clinch, like he's six, four as well, right there with Oldberg, he's going to wear on you and uh, he can mix in a little bit of grappling and, and just kind of make it dirty and make it a close fight. So yeah, if, if Oldberg doesn't get the knockout, I'm going to be clinched my cheeks, but I had to put him in a parlay this week. Yeah. I got him in two parlays. Um, 
And that's pretty much it. But I did want to sprinkle on over by decision at plus 375 for 0.2 units because he's got two wins by decision. Daewoon Jung's only been knocked out once. It was Dustin Jacoby who's the first round. If Olberg, if they make it out of the first round, I think that kind of drops a lot of the, the danger in the hand yeah. uh, because Olberg is, is really explosive in the first round. He's got five of his KOs in the first round, only one in the second. So if they get out of the first, I think Olberg could you know stay at distance and, and maybe just try to rack up some uh, significant strikes and could cruise to a decision. So plus 375, you're getting a minus 230, minus 250 favorite. I like that a lot at uh, 0.2 units. Uh, Jack Jenkins and Chepe Marisco, what you got on that one? Yeah, I'm taking Jack by decision, plus 140 for half unit. And um, other than that, I didn't get too invested just because, you know, Chepe is good, but, you know, he beat Trevor Peak. And after that performance from Trevor Peak, like Trevor Peak's kind of bottom of the barrel right now. Not saying he can't turn into a really good fighter, but he's got a little power and that's it. And, you know, Chepe has fought great competition, but if you look, when he does fight UFC level competition, he loses. So yeah. um, I think Jack Jenkins is pretty good on the feet. He's going to be a little more calculated. And if he gets the leg kicks going, I think he's going to kind of, um, you know, limit Chepe's ability to be more explosive and shoot for takedowns and th- stuff. I think if he gets the leg kicks going, he could cruise with a decision here. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people on Chepe this week, uh, maybe because they saw that war he had with Trevor Peak, and they're like, Dang, this guy's a dog, but we've already known that. So, I mean, Chepe comes in here against Jack Jenkins going down to 145 uh, compared to the short notice against 155. I think Jack is is such a – he has really good boxing. He has really good leg kicks. Like, everyone knows the leg kicks. But the hands are actually really good, too. Like, that's what made Jamal Emmers need to grapple him. And Jamal Emmers is six foot. So, I mean, you're looking at a guy that, that made a Jamal Emmers have to shoot some takedowns. I do think Chepe could have some success with the takedowns, but I'm not going to go against Jack in this spot. So I got Jack Jenkins money line minus 178 for 1.78 units. That's technically the biggest play on the card, but I just like him to win. Um, I almost sprinkled on him inside the distance because it's it's a little bit juicier. um, And I kind of like to go against the grain a lot, as you can see, but I got. I just stuck with the money line minus one seventy eight for one point seven units. Something about Jack Jenkins, man. He's got he's got something. Like I don't know what it is yet, but he's he's got some momentum for sure. He's tough, and yeah. uh, in his home country, it's tough to go against a guy like Jack. Yeah. So. Malarkey and uh, Mac Desi. What you got on that one? Yeah, just that that uh, Malarkey line paired with Olberg for minus one fifteen, and I think. People are going to be thinking Mac Desi's probably going to cash or has a good chance to cash as a dog here based off Malarkey's last fight, which I think would normally be true if his opponent had like some decent power. Like I don't think Mac Desi at this stage in his career is going to go out there and knock out Malarkey. Like he's got good hands, but it's not those like you know powerful shots. Like he's good with the combinations and he's slick and he'll rack up points on the feet. But I think when Malarkey, you know, with the reach and the size, he'll be able to land some shots too, and he'll mix in the wrestling. Being at home in front of an Australian crowd um, is going to be good as well, and I think he gets it done here too. Yeah, I didn't want to get too invested in this one, but I did see a prop that I I had to, to sprinkle on. Mac Desi inside the distance, plus 550. It was good enough for me to take at 0.2 units. I didn't want to get uh, – I, I was flirting with Malarkey by decision at like what, plus 110, 120, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. And I was just like, I don't want to sweat three rounds with Jamie Millard. Yeah. Mac Desi is a – he's a, he's the bull. I mean, he's going to come forward. He's going to throw a lot at you as far as the volume goes. So, I mean, Jamie Millard, he's been knocked out four times. So, I'm I'm willing to take it at plus 550. It's worth a little sprinkle. And then I also got him uh, in the underdog play at plus 12 and a half significant strikes for Mac Desi. He throws a lot of volume. Malarkey – I could see a world where Malarkey wants to shoot takedowns and maybe even fails, and uh, Mac Desi is able to stuff him and get him in the clinch, throw some knees, throw some elbows, uppercuts, all that good stuff. So I think plus 12.5 is a lot for a volume striker like uh, Mac Desi. We got four more fights, Hack Perest and Quinones. What you got on that one? Yeah, the only thing I got here is Nazrat Hack Perest by decision plus 120 for a half unit. Um I like Hack Perest on the feet. I really do. I enjoy watching him fight. I know a lot of people aren't blown away with him, but his hand speed's good. 
Um, he is very technical and a really, really good boxer. And I think that's a tough style for a UFC debuter like Kononez to go in there and beat. Um, I don't think Hackcraft is going to finish him on the feet. I think Kononez is tough enough to withstand some of the shots. But I do think Hackcraft eventually just outstrikes him by a pretty large margin and, and uses that you know veteran experience to his advantage and, and runs away with a decision victory here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know how to bet this one because you're looking at like does he finish him or not and it's kind of like a toss-up if he does or not i don't really like those spots so i didn't throw anything on there as far as the straight bets go i just got him in a parlay uh nazareth hack press that is other than that that's all i got on that one um blood diamond mike mathitha and uh charlie radke what you got on that one just the parlay um with that fight to go under two and a half rounds and Manel Cop for minus 113 for 1.13 units. But I just think there's a chance that Radke comes in, gets him down, and finishes him soon. There's a chance that Radke struggles taking him down and gases, and Blood Diamond can find some big shot on the feet and put him down. Um, I just think this is going to be kind of a, a pace where one guy breaks. And I'm going to guess that it's Blood Diamond. And it just looks like a fight you know, that he's already been involved with in the UFC, and Radke probably wins. But um, – you know, I do think it gets finished inside two and a half. Yeah, I don't really think. I mean, everyone thinks Blood Diamond is not very good. So right. I think Charlie Radke should be able to come in here and get a win. I threw him in a parlay with Olberg and Asanya, And then I just got two underdog plays with them involved. Plus 12 and a half significant strikes for uh, Blood Diamond because he's actually got a pretty solid significant strike ratio. A lot of guys, they're just going to shoot on him. Um and if he can get back to up, up to his feet, he's going to look to rack up some volume. He needs to throw on the feet like to make anything happen. So plus 12 and a half is worth it for me. And then uh, lower than 32 and a half for Charlie Racky could get him out of there early. I don't expect him to be willing to stand and strike with uh, blood diamond. Just take him to the mat and do your thing there for uh, Charlie Radke. Two more fights. Shane Young, Gabriel. Miranda, what you got on this one? Greasy. Yeah, I'm a little risky on this one. It is greasy, but I'm seeing something. So everybody's on Gabriel Miranda as an underdog. Mm -hmm. I've seen it all over social media. And like right now he's down to, oh, I think he was like plus 125, plus 130. It's like I don't know if there's enough value there to bet Miranda. And for Shane Young, yeah, he's on a three-fight losing streak, but he's fighting good fighters or at least better than Miranda. If you look at who Miranda's fought, it's nobody. Like he submits guys that are, are terrible and are 0 and 2 uh, during that fight and, and stuff like that. And when he does fight decent fighters, he loses. And against St. Denis, he got finished in the second round, but he was gassed the fuck out, man. He was tired. And, you know, he, if he can't get the takedowns early on Young, I think he gasses and Young just pieces him up. And, it, and it's a simple story. And on the on the ground, like Shane Young's not going to go out there and be an easy guy to just submit like that. Like he has four submissions himself, and is out of his thirteen wins. Um, he's not great on the ground. He's not bad. And on the feet, I think he's going to have a big advantage. I think Miranda is not that good. Um, I could be wrong too, but I just I don't know, man. Something's telling me at home, Shane Young, nothing to lose. He's going to have the kickboxing. I think I think Miranda gasses out. So I got Shane Young on the money line minus one seventy one point seven units. I thought that number was going to grow. I really did. So I snatched it. Snack, yeah, snatched it. Um, and uh, I took Shane Young round two KO plus 850 and then round three KO plus 1700. Because again, if Miranda gasses, he's going to get finished somewhere in the middle of the late of the fight. So I'm with you. I, I like it as well. Uh, I don't like it that much. Like still Shane Young, but you are buying him at like the absolute floor. Yeah. So. It is tough that he's still at chalk, so I didn't take that, but I did take Shane Young round two KO plus 900 for 0.1 units and round three KO at plus 1,200 for 0.1 units. I'm seeing the same thing as you. I mean, a lot of people are Miranda. I think Young, if he can survive the first round, probably takes over, and uh, I hope to God he can get a finish because Gabriel Miranda is like, he ain't that hard to finish. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Santini knocked him down three times in, like, literally a about a round like he went at like 10 seconds into the second round so he should gas um and shane young could get finished early so i like the under two and a half rounds in that fight as well minus 113 for a unit there that's all i got on that one um yeah looks like that is correct first fight of the night kevin jusette Kiefer crosby what you got on that one 
Yeah, I'm going with Juset. I think he's the more technical fighter. I watched both their film. I think Kiefer Crosby is dangerous, and he bites down in the mouthpiece early. But, um, I mean, there's going to be a pretty decent size discrepancy here, too. Like, Juset's going to be tall and long. And, uh, you know, mix that with the kickboxing, keep the fight at range, kicks up the middle, leg kicks. I, I think Juset, especially at home, should, uh, should be able to get this win. So I had to take him for 1.55 or 1.5 units on the money line. Yeah, I went with Juset money line as well. Minus 138 for a unit. I mean, Crosby 4 and 3 in Bellator doesn't exactly blow you away. Um, I mean, if Bellator's not picking him back up and he's getting into the UFC, they screams to me like they want to get Juset a win here. So yeah. I'm going to yeah. take Juset there. Money line minus 138 for a unit. And then I also took fight does not go the distance at minus 140 for a unit because Crosby, like you said, bites down on the mouthpiece, could get finished, uh, or he could get a finish if he does overwhelm Juset early. But uh, I would expect him to eventually fade down the stretch and Juset could take over and get a win. Uh, those are the, the bets. Uh, if I just want to go over the underdog plays, I did miss one which was lower than a half finish for Alexander Volkov. I don't think he finishes tied to Ivasa. I just don't. I think if he's smart, he stays at range and uh, just avoids everything. I don't think Ty's going to get knocked out on his, in his home country after being, being knocked out twice in a row. Uh, I don't think he, Volkov has the power of Pavlovich nor the the volume to keep up with like a Cyril Gon. So I like a lower than a half finish there. For Volkov, um, I don't I don't need to go over everything, but we got four power plays down, three X uh, on all of them, half unit on all of them. Like I said last week, if we go two and two, that's a profitable week. If we go three and one, that's great. If we sweep the board, even better. Uh, but we're looking really just to go two and two to make a profit. That's it. Uh, you got any messages to the Double A Premium members going into UFC two nine three? We're hot right now, man. The last four events um, combined with Dana White's Contender Series up 11.5 units on the dot. So uh, let's get a few more units. And, um, yeah, man, this is one of those cards. Just trust your gut. Don't chase. And let's, uh, let's make some money. Yeah, that's a big thing. Trust your gut. If, you, gotta, if you, you have that feeling you don't like one of our picks, just go with your gut, man. Just 100%. Go with your gut. Just, just 100%. Take, take whatever you want. If you don't like it, don't take it. Uh, if you like it, of course, take it. But that's what we're here for. Appreciate y'all. Good, uh, good luck at uh, UFC 293. And we'll see you in the recap. See ya.